Right, here we go then. As always, we'll go on board for a lap before we break the lap down. Now, this was by far the hardest week so far for me. Um, really difficult to keep the back end in check. The brake valve on this one is at 35. Um, at all costs, you've got to keep the back end from stepping out um, to get any sort of lap time. So everything in terms of inputs has to be super smooth um the back end breaks away on this lap but it was slightly quicker than this one um yeah i'm normally like i said in the previous videos i'm about half a second away from alien sort of time this one is a little bit more this is this is more like a second um yeah really tough this week really struggled with it let me know how you guys do but yeah, we'll go on board and then we'll break it down. There we go. So that was a two o seven three five zero. Um, so we'll roll it back now. I've not analysed this yet, so I'll be I'll be analysing this as we go, trying to pick up any brake markers or anything that I feel is going to help as we go. So turn one. As always, apologies for the shoddy camera work. So between three and two. This is what we're looking for. So the brakes are coming on there. If we go on board, see what we can see. So you're pretty much going to keep your eye on this Michelin board, I would imagine. So, yeah, as we get to this pillar, obviously, as it starts to cross the board, that's where I'm going to start applying the brakes. You can see that coming on there. Now, you want to stay out to the left on this. Um... And you don't want to be applying any steering, really, if you can avoid it. Um, if you do, it's going to be minimal. You can see me just creeping away from the white line there, but it's minimal inputs at this stage. And as we approach this um, marker, this is probably where, yeah, this is where we're going to start to roll the steering on. Um, even later, actually, it hasn't really cranked on yet, but we are moving away slightly. So just the inputs that I've started to apply here. Just taking me away from the uh, the side of the track. And then down your gears. Now you just want to be down to third gear for this. 
Um, so we're in third gear nice and early before we're turning in. So yeah, get your uh, get your shifts done nice and early. Now, you're tempted to come off the brake. Now, keep your eye on how long I hold this for. Obviously, it's like a double apex. It's similar to Laguna. Turn one, but going the other way. So, we're off the brake now. Actually, felt like I held it for a little bit longer. And then we're just starting to crank the throttle on as we approach the end of the first curb. Now, you don't want to be... Um, you don't want to be out here. right? You don't want to come too far out you might feel like you want to come out and swing back in um if you think about the parabolica at monza last week um in other cars it may be a quicker line obviously in this car it's best to just stay tight i've found so let's have a look at what point we're full throttle so yeah just as i uh, exit the first curb there really but it's going to be out of sight um so yeah pretty much when this starts to come to an end assuming you're on the right line you want to start throttling up there nice and tight up to fourth and we're up to fourth there at yeah 5253 so again look for your red lights on the dash um one two something like that five two five three around that sort of area so yeah away we go now for this one again one of the reasons it's probably so tricky this track you feel like you want to turn in early for this and it looks like i've just completely missed the apex but if you turn in too much here if you've got too much steering angle on here then as you apply the brakes the back end's going to step out on you um it can't do too much at once being front wheel drive so yeah <clears throat> Apply the brakes nice and smooth as you go around. So I've left. How much have I left? Probably get a car, car and a half there. Possibly two. Um, a push. Um, but yeah, just every corner, every braking zone, just think smooth. As smooth as you can. Um, smoother than this walkthrough, obviously, because I've had... Uh, a bottle of wine tonight so apologies if i'm uh slurring a little bit um but yeah we've left plenty of room inside there and we're applying the brakes just as you come off this curb so as this drops below the pillar as it just drops out of your eye line that's where the brakes are going to come on but we're nice and straight there's not much inputs on at all squeezing the brakes on and we hold it in fourth for a while i think here and then yes yeah, shift down to third just as we're turning in really so we'll roll it back yeah it's a late shift and then back on the throttle just before the curb it will unsettle the car if you've got your line right you won't run too far wide it's pretty lenient you can go all the way out here it's not too bad you can go all the way out there before you get an off track um but yeah the further you go out here you probably your angle's probably a little bit tight you're probably scrubbing a little bit too much speed off the tires this is difficult because it's unsighted so as you come off there i'm just looking for this you can see the tires the tire marks as you're going through so it just starts to darken you can just see it start to darken there and that's kind of what i'm looking for there's nothing else visually that i'm looking at now that i can really see no you could sort of argue that as this disappears but you won't see it from the cockpit yeah you won't see that but you could use it you could use it and then sort of judge it from there i suppose and then quite hard on the brakes i'm probably at about 60 percent down to third gear now the next bit if you know the circuit the next bit is uh, is all important as you know so you want to be nice and tight over here you don't want to be running this out wide because then this one's going to be tight and you're not going to be able to get on the throttle early enough so if you can keep this pinned it's difficult um i'll probably ease off a little bit 
I would have thought as the nose comes in. So I'm off the throttle slightly. Get the nose in. And then do whatever you need to do here to stay full throttle. Once you go back on the throttle, which I am now, um, do whatever you need to do. I think I short shift. Judging that the revs there though, maybe not. No, that's pretty uh, pretty normal. It felt like a bit of a short shift, but yeah, you need to be flat here. So I'm not sure if you need to come wider here. Not really sure. Um, in theory, it would help for the angle. Um, maybe I could I could do with being out here. Whether I'd lose a little bit of time in the mid corner. I really don't know, to be honest. I've not had loads of time um, on this circuit. Um, I just, I was constantly resetting. Um, really difficult to, to hook it up. So, yeah. Trial and error, I suppose. See what works for you. But I think my line's pretty good. And, yeah, as we get off that curb, we're pretty much back. On the throttle all the way through fourth gear i am cranking quite a lot of steering here i try to keep it um as minimal as you can and i mean for the for the corner which is quite a slight corner considering i am cranking that there i try not to go over 90 degrees um whether it's you know a hairpin or, or whatever i try not to crank too much on because you will scrub a lot of speed so you can see just how much i'm working the steering here so yeah, do what you need to do to, to get this turned in. Um, just make sure you're on the throttle and don't come off because obviously anything that you lift here, um, you're going to lose massively. So this is fairly lenient, I suppose. Um, you could probably take a little more. I don't know if you can have your, your right wheel and your right tyres here, possibly. But you can be a little bit more aggressive with that kerb. I think I think I found on some previous laps that I was a little bit um, wider without the off track, and then yeah, flat out, flat out all the way down, and then as you get to the end again, it's it's minimal input, so you're not scrubbing off the speed. So yeah, line that up nicely. You can actually put your wheels over here this previous lap this 20737 um i actually came off the circuit here um let's see um and i didn't get the off track there so i'll cut it a little bit so whatever works for you it'll unsettle the car a little bit um but yeah, you can see there, that's lap nine. So that's this one, slightly slower. Um, but yeah, so if you need to do it, <clears throat> um, if you're going side by side, it, it, you know, it's an option. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's risky. Might unsettle the car a little bit. So, just pick this back up. So yeah, this one's a little bit smoother, as you can see. Now, this feels like when I land, and I say that like I've took off, but you know what I mean when you do, so you go over the dip as it sort of compresses back down, brake obviously it'll naturally dip on the front end anyway as um, as it compresses a little bit of brakes and then yeah this is uh, this is key really brave as you can on the, on the entry obviously, you could probably take more of this as well and then I'm back on the throttle again, counterintuitive um back on the throttle to settle it otherwise you'll run wide um you'll know at this point if you're gonna make it or not you tend to get a good little uh feel from the car if that's working or not for you now i'll get a very nasty kick off this and it sends me um sends a wide little bit so it says i've just dipped the wheel there again it's not an off track but yeah, so there is time on this lap, this is what I mean, I just couldn't hook it up. Um, maybe, maybe three tenths, maybe I could get somewhere near the 207 flat, but 
yeah, I haven't lost a lot of speed. We're heading into a braking zone here, so I haven't lost too much. As we go past the three, that's where I'm looking. So we'll go back on board through this bit. And I'm not flat there. You can see I'm sort of feathering that through, just getting a feel for it. You'll know what's working for you. Um, but, yeah, smooth as you can all the way through. Try and avoid that. And then, yeah, as we pass the three, we're kind of in between the two, I guess. And as it disappears, we're slamming the brakes on there. So, yeah, as the cockpit passes the three board. Now, this steps out. Again, I'm trying not to apply too much steering input. Um, you can see just how careful I am with it. Now, the back end's going. You can hear it sliding there. I don't know if it slowed me down much. Because I, I, the back end steps out on me. So, it kind of lines me up a little bit. And you see there's not much counter steer going on. I'm all right, really, there. So as the back end steps out, it kind of lines me up, and I get a decent enough exit that it doesn't uh, compromise exit speed. And then, yeah, looking at the throttle as early as you can. If you can get on the throttle before the apex, which is possible, then you're going to come on much quicker. So yeah, although the back end's gone, you can tell it's not it's not a bad one. Got away with it. And again, you can see just how much steering's been cranked on through here with low speed. You don't need to be in anything other than third gear for these corners, by the way. You don't need to go down in a second at all in this lap. So yeah, crank that on, really get it turned in nice and early and yeah, as much throttle as you can. So yeah, a little bit of bounce has unsettled it a little bit. So I've just lifted slightly as it's bounced. And then yeah, as the throttle's on, I'm just trying to open that steering back up again and carry as much speed as I can down here again. This is going to be key. This is where your lap time's going to come from, really, these two big straights. So we'll roll this on. This will be one of the most um, popular braking uh, overtaking points, I think. But it's very tricky. There's one line through here. Um, obviously at race speed. So if you're side by side, be uh, very careful. But yeah, you are going to lose a lot of speed if you go through here side by side. So it's not somewhere I would try and overtake unless I absolutely have to. Uh, I think I'll go between the three and the two. Closer to the two. Oop. So as we roll it through, three disappears. And the brakes are just on as uh, the number two board just disappears from my centre monitor there. So you can pretty much use number two as your brake point here. Now, steering input, absolutely key. Um, you don't need to give it too much left. At this point um, because as you come over the crest you're going to be applying um, a little bit of right uh, steering so it will unsettle the car <clears throat> obviously as the uh, weight drops off the front and you try and turn this in if you've asking if you're asking the car to do too much here it's going to really disagree with you and uh, you're going to end up off there so really careful with this. Try and straight line it as much as you can. You can see I'm sort of lining that up there. Uh, if we go on board, there's probably no steering uh, input there. So yeah, very minimal as we come over. And you're basically just trying to open this up to go around the, uh, the right hand and out. Still holding the brakes all the way in, trailing off just as we get the nose in. And obviously... The uh, 
the circuit drops off again underneath you. Obviously, as it does, this is where it, it goes light. One of the reasons it's a really tricky circuit. Um, Any time that the the circuit goes away from you, down, obviously the uh, the grip levels drop off at the, on the front end. Um, so yeah, just be aware of it as you turn in. Um, if you're going downhill, you're not going to get as much. But obviously, as it then levels out again, you're going to get the, the compression here, and then you can really sort of grip up and stay planted. As you can see there, I'm planted now. This, maybe it's not as severe as this one, but yeah, this one you're really sort of cautious. But once you've got that done, once you've turned in here, you're really tight for the left-hander, but because it compresses here, you do get that that traction and you're able to keep that pinned all the way around here make sure you've got the steering angle cranked again though because one of the laps i found that i was uh drifting out wide a little bit there so keep the steering angle uh cranked as you come around here and then this bit again really difficult the first bit's the only bit you need to worry about so turn in aim for this Sort of line it up nice and straight. Get your braking done early. So, yeah. I've, I think I've turned a little bit first. Lined it up. Braking in a straight line. Here. Over the top here. And then, obviously, again, as it compresses, you're fine. But this is the, this is the bit what's, uh, what's worrying. If the back end goes there with the direction change you're in trouble if it grips if it's okay and it holds you can full throttle all the way through so we'll just watch the little sequence in full here and there you can have you know absolute sort of conviction at that point but yeah get this bit done nice and cautious and again it's a very small braking zone so there's no point taking any risks there's no point trying to brake late nice and smooth hold the brakes for the direction change don't let go of the brakes for the direction change so yeah keep them on till it's done okay so you see the the wheel going the other way there brakes are still on and then yeah so obviously I, i'm asking it early seems strange to do it in slow motion um obviously the car's still moving this way at this point but i'm i'm already asking it to go the other way so this is why if you let go of the brakes it, it can't it just can't deal with it and it'll snap on you so let the car sort of catch up with what you're asking it to do once it has you can see the body roll then you can release the brakes and obviously you'll hit this little compression bit and then boom you sound all the way over there as much curbs as you can nice and straight and then yeah roll that across the line for a lap so yeah let me know how you get on like i said 2073 a little bit further away this week um compared to the vrs time and the uh the quicker guys but i do think that will be reasonably competitive. Um, Monza was entertaining. Um, lap times are kind of irrelevant when you've got uh, the tour. Um, but yeah, I didn't have the best weeks. Plenty of slowdowns, plenty of carnage. But I really enjoyed it. Hopefully there's some good racing this week. But um, that lap time will drop off. Um, second lap, third lap it'll just go away downhill i think the um average lap time of the the vrs lad who did a 206 three um yannick lapchin so uh yeah big shout out to yannick um crazy pace um his average lap time was a 209 so that shows you so the optimal lap time the quickest lap times will just disappear 
Um, so don't be expecting to be putting these laps in all the time. Don't feel like you can't compete if you know any of this, because obviously it's race distance. Look after your tyres, um, keep yourself in the fight, and I'm sure you'll you'll do well. So yeah, apologies, we don't have an intro and an outro this week, but I'm a little bit pushed for time. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've had a bottle of wine, so. But I wanted to get it out, hopefully help some of you um, before the new week's circuits. Hopefully I'll see some of you on track, give us a shout, and yeah, enjoy. Good luck, boys and girls. See you next week.